I think we're seeing a couple of innovation in our industry. So I'll first start maybe with the direct selling industry. Uh, what we're seeing is that uh, there's not such a thing as the consumer that buys in direct selling or the consumer that buys in, in, uh, in e-commerce or the consumer that buys in, in retail. Really the consumer is an omni-channel consumer. So the consumer is buying in the different channels depending on the mood of the day, depending on the urgency of a product, depending on, I don't know, convenience for the day. So I think one innovation we are seeing within the direct selling is how we uh, reinvent, how we transform direct selling so that uh, uh, we address the, the, the interest of the consumer for having more convenience. So they wanna have their product much sooner and not having to wait for, I don't know, 15 to 20 days to get the product. So that's one innovation, how, how the direct selling gets much faster to the hands of, uh, the products get much faster to the hands of consumers. And then all the in innovation happening for, because of technology, because uh, one of the other things that we're working on on direct selling is uh, how to improve the shopping experience. So the consumer wants to have in an experience buying a, in, in e catalog, in a, in a catalog, the same as buying in a, in a store. So there are a couple of things that uh, uh, we are doing and, and you see happening in our industry. Uh, all these augmented reality uh, technological tools that I can try on the makeup, that I can, uh, I don't know, measure my skin and had a more um, kind of a personalized recommendation. Uh, so that, that's part, the other part is all this on the e-catalog. If you look at direct selling, I don't know, call it 10 years ago, it was a paper catalog that I had to go to a consultant house or the consultant come to my house with a paper catalog, I would take a look at it and maybe two days after I'll go to my consultant and say, hey, you know, I want to buy this. What we're seeing now is an e-catalog that uh, the consultants are sending through WhatsApp so they, they get two things. One is uh, all the convenience for the current consumers, but also they can have significantly many more consumers because before it was kind of, I leave you the catalog, I pick it up, then I give it to someone else, I pick it up, then I give it to someone else. Now I can send the catalog to many more consumers at the same time, and then it's much easier for the consumer to buy. So we're seeing a lot of uh, innovation driven by technology. Um, then if you go to what is happening, I don't know, in terms of consumer trends or, or changes, uh, in, in more on, on product benefits. You see all the way from personalization, like uh, personalized formulas that I can have uh, my exact color in makeup, or you can see that I can have my exact combination of skincare products so that it's tailor-made tailor -made for me. So it comes all from personalization, then you see all the trends happening in, uh, in um, I mean, with a consumer being more conscious on ingredients and more concerned on, on what they put on their face, so products clean off, uh, based on natural ingredients, free off. So that's the other trend that we're seeing. The, the makeup category was growing rapidly uh, because in this selfie world, everyone wants to look beautiful for a picture. Now that's slowing a bit and skincare is starting to grow. And why it's starting to grow, kind of being the, the fastest growing segment is millennials and Gen Z are getting faster in the category. Uh, because now it's prevention rather than correction. Before skincare was, uh, when I start to see my first wrinkles, then I go and buy skincare to correct. Now it's like, I don't wanna get the first wrinkles. So I, I go first and buy the, the skincare. So that's kind of a trend that we're seeing, innovation that we're seeing, but it, it's very much driven by technology. We're doing a couple of things. First is the, uh, we're co-creating a lot with uh, kind of uh, the big companies on technology. We're always looking to who's uh, leading on certain technologies. So fragmented now, one thing is augmented reality, another thing is uh, algorithms, another thing is, I don't know, machine learning. So we're, we're working with different partners that are leading in their respective technology sector. We're also doing little investment in some startups we, we have invested in four so far, and more to learn, and not only on the technology, but the way they work, what uh, kind of ways of working we can bring to our company so that we're more agile to market. Uh, so it's really connect and develop and, and these little investments that we're doing in, uh, in these uh, four startups to learn how they're working. I think that it always starts from the consumer or from the customer. If the technology is solving a pain point, a, a need that the consumer or the consultant uh, has, 
it's adopted very rapidly. Uh, so that, that I think is one part. It's, it's really not technology for the sake of technology. It's really what's a pain point or what's an unmet need that we're trying to address and then comes technology to solve it. When the technology comes to serve a consumer need, it's adopted very fast. You see WhatsApp in Latin America. I mean, everyone use, uses WhatsApp. How many of us had a training on how to use WhatsApp? No, I think that it was very easy to use, very UX friendly, and, and it was solving a need of people to get connected. And we've see, we're seeing the same thing in our, in our, in our case. Initially, uh, when we started to bring a kind of digital tools to the consultant, there was a question, how it's gonna be the adoption? Uh, are, I mean, all the different ages are gonna adopt it equally fast, all the different socioeconomical levels are gonna adopt it equally fast. We had that question ourselves. And you see it, the moment we put a tool that is very easy to use, that addresses a need, we get very fast adoptions. The moment that we just put a technology that was not well crafted and, uh, and, and it's really not solving something that is important for the consultant or for the consumer, then we suffer on the adoption. So at the end, I think it's, it's, it's using the technology to solve a consultant or a consumer need. The moment we do it, the adoption comes very easily. Uh, investment in technology, we're, we're almost doubling our investment in technology in 2019 versus 2018. So we're fully committed on, on technology, but really always with that caveat. It's not technology for technology. It's technology to solve a consumer or a consultant need. But the, the consumer is adopting. Then we also have in Latin America millennials, Gen Z, and, and they're equally savvy, technically savvy than any Gen Z or millennial that you see globally. And they're adopting. The other thing that is happening is that the, the amount of information that they're getting through technology, through social media. We're having in Latin America a consumer that is very well informed. It's a consumer that is uh, empowered with a lot of information. Sometimes you see them talking on, on benefits of products that are not even sold in Latin America. You say, how do you know that? I don't know, because I'm in X and, uh, and I learned and I, I found out. So it's, it, it's a kind of a raising the bar for the companies on how to meet the consumer, how to meet the consumer needs, because they're very much aware. 